I'm talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see yes, and everybody you can't that we've talked about. Yes, I'm here to strain with you, man. I swear to God I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain with everything you got. Let's go. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show with your host, Joe Miller. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Jay Spence the King, and I am filling in for my brother, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, filling in for Joe Mil- the Voice Miller. And I'm here filling in because this show is a big deal. It's the off tackle show with John Fina. Oh, I pointed the wrong way. See, I'm not used to doing Joe's job to John Fina. What's up, John? Hey, hey, Spence, man. Thanks for sitting in. It's been too long since we chatted. Uh, we got to get together. I roll up to Phoenix quite a bit, but man, business keeps me so busy. But uh, we got I got to make a better point of uh, reaching out before I head up there. Yeah, and this last weekend would have been fun, man. Uh, the Colorado game was fun over the weekend. I, I went out there to see uh, Colorado actually defeated ASU last minute type thing, and that was fun. There's a lot of good football this weekend in college football. How's your son's team doing? Well, let's see. On the weekend, I'm three for three, right? So my JV team, which I coach, we won. South Point Varsity won. Bruno won at UCLA. And then uh, my Bills lost, my Arizona Cardinals lost, and my Arizona Wildcats lost. So I went three for three. (laughs) Um, Three out of three or whatever. I'm 500 on the weekend. I guess if I were hit, if I were, if I were batting an MLB, I'd be, uh, I'd be over the moon. But yeah, it was, uh, it's pretty rough weekend. I nearly got attacked. I stopped in at a Walmart, nearly got attacked by a homeless guy, which really put me in a bad mood. It was bad enough that we lost. And God, <laughs> that was crazy. I don't know. You got man. me How about you? <laughs> I'm poor yeah, shot yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know how your weekend went. You're wearing Arizona Cardinals gear. You're not even wearing, you know, morning Buffalo Black. That's M O U R N I N G Buffalo Black. Yeah, no, I don't, you know, I have to get a Buffalo black, like a hoodie or a shirt or something so I can mourn whenever we lose. But, but no, actually, surprisingly, I'm not even in a bad mood. Like yesterday after the game was over, I was a little annoyed for maybe, maybe a half hour, but I think I was more annoyed because of Twitter than the game. <laughs> so it was, oh, me. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter went 360 on us, right? Last week, we were oh, the world man. beaters. This week, everybody gets fired again. Man, oh, as, as often as everybody gets hired and fired, HR is just like <laughs> under a stack of paperwork. But hey, everybody in the chat, hello, Steph, Richard Rush, Karen. Yeah. Uh, you know, thanks for joining again, Trek, the Trek reviewer. Guys, uh, over, overreaction, Buffalo. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're excited to have you. If you have a question you want us to address, Get in there for that super chat. We'd love to hear what you have to say. If it's a gripe or you just want to cry out loud, you know, we'll hold hold hands and we'll hug a little bit. Uh, It's hard (laughs) to see the future right now, if you know what I mean, Mr. J. Spence the King. Let's hear from ours. It is hard to see the future, but with Fichte, Endel, and Elmer Eye Care, you'll improve your vision. Why don't we hear from our sponsor right now, Mr. Spence? Nothing builds the thrill quite like seeing our Buffalo Bills march right down the field. Every pass, every play, and every touchdown. But for those of us who have to catch the action blurry, it's time to call Fichte, Endel, and Elmer Eye Care and schedule a consultation. With Zeiss Smile technology, you can have your vision corrected in moments so you can get back to focusing on what's important. It's a quick, pain-free procedure with a world-class team and you're back in the action. Visit us online at Ficta.com and take our free self-evaluation test to see if you are eligible and schedule a consultation. Because here in Buffalo, we don't just watch the game. We live it. Ficta, Endel, and Elmer Eye Care. We are focused on you. (laughs) 
Joe Joe oh. has just the best voice in the world, doesn't oh, he? Oh, come on now. I was just about to say last week we ran your spot. And, uh, <laughs> man, I was in the mood. It was so nice. I'm running out. I'll get my – I probably need to, next time in Buffalo, take that test and have get evaluated because my presbyopia is uh, increasing. You know what? I um, for, It was the best decision I've ever made in my life. Honest to God, getting getting um, the eye care just the so I got mine done a few years ago. It was before they had the Zeiss, uh, you know, the new Zeiss Smile technology, mm -hmm. but yep. it was still the best decision that I've ever made. Like I couldn't see yet alone, man. I, I couldn't see anything. Now, man, there's times I sit outside just to look at the trees. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, we got our first super chat of the night, though. Shout out to man, Steph. Man, Steph is on top of it. What yeah, in the H-E double toothpicks, all caps, is Josh Norman going to do for us besides having another body in the team? He was meh before. Well, Steph, thank you for the super chat. You know, before the show started, Spence and I were talking about this very subject. And uh, I guess minus making a big trade and giving up something for the future. You know, they got to look at who's on the street or who's really available at low cost. So I, I hear what you're saying. Um, they they could have made a bigger move. Uh, Spence, you had somebody in mind as we were talking. Well, give us your take on it. And I, I'm halfway agree with you right now. You know, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm really in the middle. Yeah, no. So I think for me, what I was doing before we even before the, the signing was announced for uh, Josh Norman going to the practice squad, I was kind of like just looking around the NFL at like rookie deals or uh, very inexpensive deals for guys who are playing well. And one of the ones that I looked at was Pat Sertan from over in Denver. Um, he's on a rookie deal and I think he's playing very well. I think with the team, with with Denver overall not playing well, I think it could be a conversation that Brandon Bean can call over and have. Um, I don't know what it would take. Patrick Sertan is a good player. He's playing very well, so it might be too expensive for us, you know, as far as draft capital or whatever. But I think in a year like this, uh, and how do you feel about this? Because in a year like this, I feel like coming into the year, when you had Trey coming in, we were confident. Matt Milano, you lose Daquan Jones. So, like, you're losing – it's not like you're losing – um depth pieces you're losing star players like matt milano was an all pro last year trey white was an all pro before he tore his acl so you have you know it's quality and, da and daquan jones was tearing it up and you know now we've got uh dalton kincaid in concussion protocol maybe you've got uh dawson knox with the wrist i mean mm -hmm. whoa i mean the only thing i can say about that is if you don't make a big move, are you saying that because of these injuries, you're just kind of throwing in the white flag on the season? Uh, you know, do you not try to save the season by getting somebody who's more established or or maybe a younger, better athlete? My concern about um, the signing is he's like 35 years old. And I just I don't see it. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what the strategy was. Maybe there's more to come. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I don't know what to say. But it's definitely a little bit of a head scratcher. But it's so quick too, right? So maybe this is a stopgap measure that they put in place while they do the research, while they really measure everything they have, what they're willing to give up, what they're willing to trade away. Uh, but it's uh, I, I don't think we've seen the end of the moves. Uh, Puna Ford obviously will have to come up now, right? So Puna's mm -hmm. going to come up. Um, the linebacking situation really concerns me along with the cornerbacks because – you know, even though I think Williams played very well, I think that Bernard played really well in the game in London. You know, that puts us down to Dodson and and uh, it's it's uh, and, and two really young guys. So where do you go from there, Tyler Medikevich? It's not an optimum situation on defense right now. And dude, how our defense been playing pretty darn good until this rash? Well, I even think they played pretty good. You know, yesterday with you know, with consideration to all the injuries that happened, I think they played pretty well. Now, on a grand scheme of things, looking from the outside in, it's like, hey, they gave up 474 yards. That's not a good game. But, you know, for most of the game until the fourth quarter, they held these guys to 11 points, man. And so I, I'm I, I, that's why. I, and, I, and I'm with you on that, but I got to push back. I look at the time of possession. They had the ball 16 yeah. minutes more than we did. Way they had more. 88 offensive plays to our 16. Yep. That's 28 plays at 
at seven play drives. That's four more drives than we had. Uh, the score didn't reflect, you know, what they did to our defense, but it was painful, man. I mean, that was that game all the way around. Let's go back. You know, we didn't even start. What were your expectations? I really yeah. expected us to come in, kind of replicate what Miami, what we did with Miami, really work the middle of the field. I thought the defense, you know, we had some press bail. We had some press man against Miami. I thought we'd put a little bit more pressure on the receivers. This receiving crew is not quite as good as Miami, but I think we let them dictate to us a little too much, and, and they made too many of those eight-yard, 14-yard sideline catches that just kept those drives going. How many third and longs did they convert that were super important to the drive? And then you throw in our, our penalty situation, 11 penalties for 109. I'm sorry, I got to wait. What was my expectation? Built in <laughs> with some pressure on the corners, some very good penetration up front, strong safety play, solid linebacking, and then offensively, you know, just uh, sustained drives, smart plays in the middle of the field. And the run game, I, I thought it was a departure from the run game that we used against Miami, which statistically was not significant, but effectively was very good. Right. I'm agreeing with everything you said there, except I'm going to take it a step further. I had expectations for us to look the way we did against Miami, but I thought we were going to look the way we did against the Raiders. Like I, I thought that even the defense, um, again, the injuries, I get it, but I thought we were going to shut them down. I didn't think that um, Trevor Lawrence was going to have over – I didn't think he was going to have over 270 yards, yet alone the numbers that he put up. I didn't think that um, I'm a huge Calvin, like I'm a huge Calvin Ridley fan. I didn't think Calvin Ridley was going to put up 100 yards on us. I didn't think Zay Jones would catch a touchdown. Like we're making Zay Jones look like a boss when he couldn't catch a cold in Buffalo in the winter. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I was disappointed with with a lot of things, um, but I, I don't know. I guess I guess for me. I, I feel like I can't really judge the team properly just because of all the injuries. I feel like when Matt Milano goes down, I know the team still has to play and they have to do it. But I feel like, you know, and you and you played, I feel like somebody literally just let all the air off the tire and said, all right, go back out there and finish playing. And I just feel like when Matt, somebody like Matt Milano, when he gets injured, it's just tough. Yeah, he's like he's a quiet warrior. You know, he's not a loud guy, but he leads by example. Everybody looks up to him. Always in the right position. Jay, we got to, or Spence, we got to talk about because it's an elephant in the room. You know, post game Twitter was a mess. And there was discussion about why the Bills left on a Thursday night and arrived on a Friday afternoon evening for a game on a Sunday afternoon evening with a five hour, I think it's five or six hour time change. Do you? What are your thoughts on that? I'd like to hear yours before I give mine. Okay, um, you're probably going to disagree with me, but I think that the Buffalo Bills organization has completely fumbled this thing. I think that they should have left last week, following the game. So it didn't have to be last week Sunday night. It could have been Monday, but I think that they should have left early. Not for the sake of. I'm not using it as an excuse at this point. We lost, but I think. I'm For not instance, saying you right. are, but I, but when you when I get to my point, what you yeah, said you. is gonna is, is gonna make some sense. Go ahead. Okay, I got you. Uh, but so like Sarah's in the comments here. Uh, she says she just landed. She just got back from over there. Sarah texted me uh, the day she landed, and she went to sleep too early because she was tired. Then woke up the wrong time, and then the next day she was still tired from being jet lagged. So it literally took her two and a half days to feel somewhat normal. I know these guys are professional. I know these guys are different. It's a different set of circumstances, and I know that they have to do different things. But in general, when I fly from west to east and there's a three-hour time difference, it, it it's a deal for me. Like, it, it actually it, – it's a deal for me. So go ahead. I want to hear your, your thoughts on this now. Man, we're, we're spot on with this. Now, I'm not going to blame the loss on this, right? But I, I, for kicks, you know, you hear about all kinds of things that may or may not affect you. Suicide perfect, affects a lot of people. It's a horrible event that people choose – and uh, it saddens me. And I, I've heard over the years that the um, daylight savings time has an effect on suicide rates. So let's just extrapolate for a second here. All right. Mm. So 
during daylight savings time, suicide rates go up by 6.25%. Wow. That to me is a huge, I, I haven't done the analysis of variance because I, I took that class when I was in psychology in college, but I'm not doing that math anymore. But that feels like a big number. Now, I'm not saying we're making players suicidal, but an optimum, you know, this is a mentally difficult game. You mm -hmm. are, of course, physically fit. So that's kind of the thinking. You forget about the mental aspect of it. If two players out of 53 men have a hard time with the time change, does that not matter if three players do? So I'm in your camp on this. Heck, my second year, we went to Germany. We went to Berlin. We went to Berlin five days in advance of a preseason game, a preseason game, a throwaway game. And what was – and we're, we're flying out there like this. They should have left after Miami. You get to London, hang out for two days, training room or not, fill a conference room full of ice buckets, get guys in there with mood music and something, get them settled in. I can't say whether it affected the game or not, but I can tell you – if you left earlier, you'd have taken it out of the discussion. Right. And uh, hey, hey, I see uh, Jay Spencer King in the comments. Tracy Fitcher's in the comments. This is a uh, belated birthday to Tracy. Sorry, we uh, hey. our boys could not bring the uh, win home for you on your birthday. Um, and actually, but, you know uh, what? I also wanted to say to birthday, Tracy. Tracy. And I also wanted to say to Tracy, I didn't get a chance to reach out to her, but I saw on the timeline. I just want to offer my prayers and my feel, my thoughts, Yeah. Uh, you know, with the loss of your mom. My heart is with you. You know, we all love you over here at Buffalo Rumblings. You're one of our favorite supporters. So uh, we love you and we're praying which we're with you. So, um, yeah. but no, I, I, I'm, I'm, it's actually surprising that you agree with me. I thought you were going to disagree with me on this take, but you know what? No, so, I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm just one of those people that wants to reduce variables. Right. So, so, well, let me ask so, you this. So, you so, like so Spence, so was it, was mm -hmm. it because they're, they were cheap? Did they go not deep pockets? Uh, what's the deal? I mean, like, okay, that's a lot of hotel rooms. People have asked me over the years, you know, after a game, do you stay in New York or Indy or Miami? No, man, we, we go right to the damn airport and we got an airplane, we go home because do you want to buy hotel rooms for another 150 people or 125 or 100? I mean, multiply that by a decent hotel room at 250 bucks a night. And then, you know what, dig into your pocket. So was it a cheap move? I just say, eliminate the variables, bite the bullet. The NFL should be uh, picking up some of that tab. Maybe they are, yeah. I don't know, but it did, it doesn't help the look. Well, but that's what I was going to say too. It's like, I understand, A, that these things do come out of the team's pockets and their budgets. But when you're talking about the fact that, you know, the NFL schedules you to go overseas, this is not a regular trip. This isn't your team going from Buffalo to New England or Buffalo to Miami where you just have to worry about a flight and a charter bus and a hotel room down there. Like it's different internationally tra traveling. So for me, if this is an expectation of the league to say, no, we want to showcase the Buffalo Bills overseas, then I think the league needs to figure out some way to to. I don't know. I just feel like they should accommodate the team to help out in certain ways. I, I well, did want to ask you about this, though. If we're building the brand overseas, then bring them out early. You know, have a, a media session from three media to day. four, three days in a row. Have a meal with the biggest, uh, you know, podcasters and newspapers and radio hosts yeah. that you can. Fly us out. And really <laughs> blow it up. <laughs> yeah, right? fly us out. Fly me and John well, and fly, Joe out. Fly Jay Spence the King out, <laughs> Joe Miller, Sarah Larson, John. Oh, man, let's go, baby. Uh, it, it was um, it was ridiculous. Um, and again, listen, everybody listening on the pod, everybody listening in the comments right now, listening live, Spence and I are not saying this is what caused the loss mm -hmm. of the game. However, by not eliminating that particular variable, you call things into question, mm -hmm. right? Make the deal in advance. Eliminate that. Get there three, four days, four, five days early. And do bed checks, keep people up, you know, get a cattle prod, make sure they're staying up late enough so that they fall asleep and get on a regular schedule. It just seems silly to me. I think the whole, I mean, it does seem silly because to me it's something that uh, shouldn't be a factor. I think to me, I think one of the things that can fix it going forward, don't schedule a team overseas unless their week prior is to me, it should be the, their bye week 
So these early overseas games, no, give their team their bye week. So that way, if it, like, so for instance, say the Bills were on bye this week. All right. If everybody wants to go overseas and we go early, you okay, your vacation, you can do your thing with your family. You can do your thing with whoever. But then this is when the team has to report. But you're already over there and, and you're relaxed and you're acclimated to the time, you're acclimated to the weather, you're acclimated to the food and to the people. And you're, you know, I, I just think giving people realistic amount of time to do things, I think, should be the thing that's fair, because I, I do understand everybody's point about uh, Jacksonville being there two weeks in a row. There was an interview where uh, running back Travis Etienne actually said, like, well, no, I, I feel like, you know, last week we were sluggish and we just couldn't do it. This week we felt so much better. I could only imagine how the, how the Bills felt. I think it was a big factor. So I, if the player is saying it's a factor, it's a factor. Yeah. Well, uh, OK, that's we've we've uh, you know, we've kicked this dead horse enough for right now. Let's let's go back and, <laughs> and let's assume let's assume they were there four days early. And let, let's let's talk a little bit about. I'd like to say the the needs work, but we have to talk about the bad stuff that happened. And I know everybody already knows about our injury losses, the injuries well, that we didn't even have on the field uh, with Rousseau and who else was uh, who else didn't come. Shaq Lawson was out. Shaq um, Lawson was out. So we lost Trey for the year, uh, but yeah, no, we, we, I mean we were we were missing some guys. We were hamstrung going in, and now I mean, look. It's a dev when it's a devastating loss losing Daquan Jones and Matt Milano, and I think that you know there is there is a creeping doubt that happens. I don't care who you are. You know these are the biggest, strongest guys in the world playing the toughest game mentally and physically, but doubt can creep. And when you lose two guys like that who have been outstanding players already. You know, you that you start questioning, you start dropping confidence. But as far as a, I guess a technique question, you know, where do you see what needed work and what was just out of sorts? Technique wise, to me, well, you know what? So obviously, you and I talked last year when when you came down for the Bills backers game, and we got a chance to watch the game together. Uh, the Miami game. We watched the game a little differently, and I'm trying to watch it the way you told me to watch it. It's still a little difficult. For me, I, I guess I still watch the game where I look at just overall performance. I don't know as far as technicalities or or certain things that people need to do, like little things yet. I didn't go back to rewatch it, but honest to God, man, to me, the biggest issue that I saw, and a lot of people are going to disagree with me, the biggest issue I saw was Josh Allen. And I don't know if that's fair. Well, look, I think in the in the aggregate, right? Because you talk about numbers and you know, you don't look at the game maybe through the lens that I do sometimes. And and to be fair, I'm no wizard. I don't, you know, I I try and work coverages a little bit into my mindset. Uh in the beginning of a defensive play, I'm always looking at alignment. I'm looking at two high safeties, single high safety. Are we in press on the snap of the ball? Try to catch that and then revert my eyes back into the into the uh, the trenches. But I, I just feel like when, when, uh, and I agree with you, Josh just was not sharp in the beginning. But when they started getting a rhythm, I felt like they that McDermott needed to do something to disrupt with on the edges, with pressure, with press man, and I I didn't see anything that really put them out of the game plan that Trevor Lawrence was executing and and doing very well. So. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's just painful all around. I thought the offensive line played fair to good. I mean, there are no sacks. You look at the board, there were no sacks, but there was some pressure. Josh, and maybe Josh was the guy that didn't get the right rest. It didn't get right on the right time zone. Maybe he was the guy. Maybe it took a little while to get warmed up. And then you look at the reduction of snaps and it took a little bit longer for him to get rhythm. I don't think they were committed in a run game philosophy that looked the same as what we ran against Miami. And I'm just tired of this idea. And I don't know that it's true that week to week, you change your run game philosophy based on the defense that you play. So yeah. if we're, if we ran zone and we ran it effectively, though, the stats don't show it against Miami, we ran a lot of zone run and it worked really well. And then this week's against Jacksonville, we're seeing a lot of angle blocking, pin and pull, whatever you want to call it. And I'm scratching my head going, why? 
why why don't you cement and a philosophy and just apply it just mm-hmm. just force your will on the other team and it was it was upsetting and you know we do that defensively so like every game we go out and we play our game defensively it doesn't matter who we're playing against it doesn't matter what they're doing we're we're going to impose our will on you defensively. And I think when you have a quarterback like Josh Allen and you got Stefan Diggs, I think you should be able to do that on offense too. I agree with you. And and so the running game, Sarah in the comments mentioned like this was the first week all season that we've been stopped running the ball this season. And I think that's part of it. We didn't even try. Like I feel like they stopped after a while. Like, okay, five attempts for James Cook, negative four yards. They didn't even try to give him the ball. You know, Damian Harris, I think he had I think 14 yards or something like that. They didn't even try to continue to give them the ball. So at some point it's like, look, no, run the ball. It doesn't matter if you feel like, okay, a few plays didn't work here or a few plays didn't work there. Get more creative, but at the same time, continue to run the ball, control the clock. You mentioned how many more plays that they had offensively than we did. That's why the defense looks tired. You're giving up plays because you're on the field for an extra quarter longer or just about. I don't know how. What, what did you say the numbers were as far as time? Uh, they had the ball 16 minutes more than we did. They had a but whole that's quarter. Eter- that's an eternity. It's a whole that's quarter. a quarter of football, man. Like they literally yeah. held the ball for a whole NFL quarter of play more than the Bills did. Yeah, it was it was awful. So 88 offensive plays. I could tell you this: uh, UCLA Bruno played the whole game last weekend. They had 98, 95 snaps. I talked to him after the game. It was like seven o'clock at night. He's like, I can't keep my eyes open. I'm I'm spent. So, you know, it, it looks like a lot, but when on the defense too, we loved that. The more plays we had, the more. The, I mean, those guys up front, they couldn't even lift their arms, and you just keep the pressure on. I didn't see, and I'd have to go back and look, but honestly, there was such a bad taste in my mouth after this game. I didn't go back and look at the film. I apologize to everybody listening. Usually, usually I go back and watch. I don't remember seeing James Cook head to the edges. He did really well again, you know, getting to the outside. We haven't had a back who can hit the outside in a long time. Why weren't we doing that? Uh, The penalties, holy smokes, 109 yards in penalties on 11? And they had they had six for fifty four, I think. Mm-hmm. And and here's one that will forever just I would you know as offensive lineman Jerry Strasky would say the same damn thing. When you're engaged with a guy, and somebody falls down behind you, or you get tripped, and you end up falling backwards, and the guy lands on top of you, they call holding. And that happened to Torrance. And I just I just shake my head, man. They're, these officials they don't understand like. Never would you, as an offensive lineman, with pride, with dignity, want to drag a guy down on top of you. <laughs> you will be laughed out of the offensive line room. You, you're like, oh, man, like I don't even want to show up when I get run over like that. I mean, it's happened a couple of times in my career. It's embarrassing. That is not a technique that I will espouse. And all you referees, <laughs> aspiring referees out there, you see an offensive lineman on his back with a guy on top of him. No, he didn't like jump in the air, throw holding. his legs around his hips. And pull <laughs> he didn't him down. pull him down. He didn't do it. He didn't want it. <laughs> Dude, not only will your teammates laugh at you, you are going to feel like hell. And then the guy like me in the room is going to fine you. You're going to get fined for looking like a jabroni. And that's what we did. You did something stupid. <laughs> Spence, you come in our offensive line room and you say something dumb, and I just get out my book and I go, Spence, that was the dumbest thing I've heard all day. I'm finding you 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I would have been broke at the end of the season. It didn't matter what type of contract I had. I could have had a I could have had a um offensive line talk. So I could have had a Deion Dawkins contract and I still would have been broke saying dumb shit all year, man. <laughs> uh, I, I'll say this too. I thought the hold on uh Torrance was ticky tack, also. I, I, I didn't think it was a good call. Um and you know, there were a few calls. Our, our penalties were hell of a lot bigger than theirs. You yeah. know, and there were I a mean, few calls that yardage. I feel like were they were egregious. Some of them, some of them were like just completely egregious. Um, but again, I'm not, I'm not trying to. I don't want to give any excuses. Like I'm not saying we lost because of the referees. We didn't lose because of the travel. We didn't lose because of any. We lost because we lost the game. But yeah, but man, a lot of these things are factors. Yeah, listen. In, in the eyes of the Bills Mafia, Josh Allen has to start fast. The first three got drives of the game, he's got to be on point. 
He is an, an emotional leader of the offense. Minus him, Stefan. Well, he's a he's an emotional uh, field general type leader. Stefan Diggs is more of an emotional type leader, right? You always look to your quarterback, and they have to. He has to take it upon himself whether they whether they script out the first ten plays or not. You know, and sometimes the script just goes out the window. But there has to be a quarterback who starts the first two or three drives of the of the game making the throws where he's used to making the throws. What whatever it takes in warm up, if you got to do a little bit of live and warm up to get the feel, then damn well do it. I, I don't know what else to say. I, I okay, guess all right. I'm confused. Well, I'm yeah. confused cuz you, so you're you, you were a professional you're a retired professional player. They say, when I was in high school, <laughs> When I was in high school, I was amped for every basketball game, like in high school. You know what I mean? Like it didn't. And now I get it. Again, these guys are pros. They played high school, college, little league, you know, so they've done it all. But I'm saying like in high school, you didn't have to amp me up for a basketball game or a football game because I knew it was game day. I knew what time it was. I knew all the girls was going to be looking at me and I knew, you know what I mean? So it, you didn't have to hype me up for that. I know I just don't understand when when we have these conversations about the games um, when the energy level isn't there. And I see a comment in here uh, from Joey that says Stefan Diggs was talking about how there was no sense of urgency. And, and he has and made those right. comments. L let me let me quick address what you just said. Yeah. Every, everybody misses a tackle. Everybody misses a block, runs a wrong route or makes a bad throw. You get one. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I don't love Aaron Rodgers. He'd probably go to the Hall of Fame. But you don't have a series of off-the-mark throws when you need them. You, and we haven't addressed the drops. We, you know, you, These are contested catches in the NFL. You know, you love it when a guy's wide open. But, you know, they always talk about the difference between college quarterbacking and professional quarterbacking is the guy that was covered in college is open in the pros. Get the ball into the window. And we got to get closer to that window. Let's see what Mike Kingsley has to say. My man, Mike, with the super chat, he says the unit missing five of his top starters held its own until they dropped from exhaustion. True. While the unit at full strength never got on track. And I think that's my point. I think when it comes to saying that Josh didn't play well or um, when it comes to saying that, it, look, I understand that when you look at the entire the entire game, you look at the stats only, you'll say, oh, 349, two touchdowns, that's a great game. I understand that. But the end of the game is when that happened. Those first three quarters, we had seven points going into the fourth quarter. We got to be better on offense. We do. We do. We, we can't drop balls. You just can't drop balls that are in your hands. We got to make better throws. You're going to, you know, you're going to miss every now and again. There was no commitment to the run game. And, and you know, that's that's interesting, right? We were down five on defense, and we were, you know, fully loaded on offense, and we couldn't make it happen. Why? And that's the, that's the sad part. We're and, right. and not only just that we're fully loaded on offense, we're fully loaded on offense with a team that a lot of people feel like has one of the top five offenses in the league. And while the Jaguars have a good defense, nobody is – respectfully, do you ever hear anybody – fearing the Jaguars defense like we talk about Josh Allen on defense over there but outside of that like I never hear anybody say oh my god the Jaguars are oh they're not, not since not since the 90s man not since the so 90s so I, I don't even want to give that excuse it's like okay the Jaguars were good they did their job but what what did we see from their defense that made us say they really they really shut us down <sighs> Uh, I think you get behind the eight ball a little bit. You always get away from the run game. You have a few running plays with plenty of time, but now you're falling behind in the in the play count, and you start thinking you got to make up all this uh, this distance. I don't think you know we didn't have great field position throughout the entire game. We had a nice punt return. I think got called back on a holding or something like that. I keep saying the same thing with Joe. Like, I don't even – I don't want a guy who's going to run punts back for a touchdown. I just want a punt return team that doesn't commit a penalty. If you fair catch everything, fine. You get five yards, fine. Just don't make me go backwards. I don't want to be an offensive lineman running out to the 35-yard line and then see that flag at the corner of my eye and then start walking back to the 20 or the 15. Mm -hmm. 
it's a it's just miserable. Just don't hurt us. And um, you know, whatever it was, why couldn't you get up for the game? Why couldn't you rectify the things? I say to I say to these kids all the time at JV football and varsity football, I said, look, you don't get a turn to make a mistake. Because the guy next to you made a mistake doesn't mean that you get to have one later on. It means that you turn to the guy that made a mistake and say, cut that shit out. Yeah. Right? And you hold everybody to a higher standard. You don't just allow everybody to make a mistake. Now, they do happen. But at some point, you just got to coalesce and say, guys, we got to, you know, everybody's got to, you know, put a shoulder on the wheel and push. Oof. It's, it's Anything just... good out of this game? Anything good out of this game, Spence? What do you got? Uh, wow. <laughs> no, no, you know what? No, I so for me, the, the, the good that I do have is that, you know, as much as anybody wants to say anything negative about Stefan Diggs, I think that he's the most consistent player on this football team, offense and defense. I think mm -hmm. every week and, and I just saw a comment up here from someone uh, questioning his urgency uh, based on a comment he made because he got out muscled by a 5'8", five, 5'9", five, defensive back. I think sometimes you lose those, but I think Josh underthrew him. You know, I think if Josh put another two yards on that throw, that's a touchdown easily. But besides that point, I think Stefan Diggs, A.J. Epinesa, Ed Oliver, besides like those first two penalties in the first quarter, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and then I'd probably, I'd probably end it on, see, I'm trying to be good here. Let me, let me pause from the good. Let me get one more. I got I, I need your opinion on something. Okay. How, how do our safeties look to you? I don't think that they're, they're being asked to do anything impactful or they're not doing anything impactful. So I, I feel like in a game like that, or in every game, you know, you got to take the moments when you tell the safeties, you know, playing cover umbrella all the way over the top isn't going to wow anybody. You got to take a chance and come downhill, make a choice, you know, either take the post or take the out and come down hard and, and make somebody pay. And I don't mm -hmm. think we're taking that chance. Now, with that said, because we're playing a little bit different style defense up front, I mean, we are not really going gap control. We are hair on fire getting through the line of scrimmage. That might be the concession that you make. So me not being a defensive coordinator, and thank God for that, because that would be a catastrophe. <laughs> that would be a catastrophe followed by a disaster. But I, I know where you're going, and I don't think that they're playing aggressive enough or at all. And now – you could argue that they're not capable anymore, that they're too old, or it's the scheme. I don't think it's either. I think, um, well, I, there's some things that I know that I, I probably can't say publicly right now. I, but I think that there's things. You could text that, me, bro. I'll text you for sure. But I think there's things um, that factor in to, to how guys are playing right now. But I, I, I do think that what we've seen so far through five weeks that our safeties do not look as explosive or look as dominant as we've seen out of our tandem over the last five. Well, last year we didn't yeah. have Micah. So prior to that, the four years prior, I just, I think that, you know, there's some things happening. So, but back to the good, I just yeah. wanted your opinion on that, but back to the good. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll say Stefan Diggs, AJ Epinesa is a madman, and I love him. And I apologize. All of a sudden, I mean, thank God he showed up. Yeah. You no, know, what I, I don't I like though is, well, yeah. <laughs> Dude, where you been? Thanks for coming. Where you, you been? Know, keep, where you keep been? Keep it up. Keep it up. You know, I'll buy the donuts, right? I'll buy the mm -hmm. coffee. Let's go. Uh, yeah. He did have a great game. And Ed Oliver is playing really well. I just think the scheme really fits him a lot better, uh, clearly. Um, let him go. Let him feast. Like, you know, let the guy attack. I love that. Yeah, I mean, look, I, and again, you look defensively when we had them in a bad situation penalty extended their drives. I think they had three, if not four bills penalties that extended their drives. And those are just killers, just killers. Tracy said in the, in the chat that we were flat. And as I was watching the game, like I didn't get a hype feeling about anything that was going on. Did you? So no. if, if I don't feel hyped, you know, and everything looks and feels flat, it's probably pretty flat. You know what? No, there was one moment I did get hyped and I tweeted immediately and some and a bunch of people disagree with me. I wanted the Bills to go for it on fourth down after they had that huge play 
from Stefan Diggs. I think Josh threw it like 40 yards or something. Diggs caught it. We ended up getting stopped those next three plays. Fourth down, we ended up punting. Everybody's like, and, and I, I, under normal circumstances, I absolutely get why you punt that ball. Like it's fourth and I think, what, eight or something like that, and you're on your 45-yard line, you punt it. You got a good kicker. You might choose to try to kick it from that far, but you punt it. My thing is no, – I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And the stats – on going yeah. forward on fourth and two or or and less are well, no, it far was longer than you think. Well, no, it was long. Oh, oh, oh wait. Okay. Yeah, it was, was it was like fourth and eight. Defense. Yeah, no, it was fourth and yeah, eight. But my ooh, point was yeah. well, it is rough. We were on our 45 yard line, but my point was for that entire first half, we had no momentum. So you finally get a huge play out of digs. You try to get your offense kind of going up. When you're on a 45 yard line, the defense was playing well in that first half. We held them to eleven points through three quarters. I'm saying you have a huge play like that. Um, Mike just uh, updated me. He said fourth and ten. So, I, like I said, I understand it's a play that you normally don't do, but you're in your own, you're in your territory. And to me, look. At this uh, wait point, a we're on we're on our own forty-five. I'd have to go back and look at it, Mike. We'll yeah, it was it was 45. second quarter. If we were, I'm sorry, I, you punt. No, and, and and everybody said that. And so what I'm saying is I get yeah. why under normal yeah. circumstances I would agree with that and say punt. The reason why I yesterday I said, no, don't punt, go for it, is because we weren't generating any offense in that first half. So when we finally no. started to do something fun and look good and get excited, I'm like, oh, no, you keep you, – you do it, you do it. But go ahead. Second, I understand second, why you punt. Second quarter, man. I don't know. I don't know that I can uh, – I don't know I can – Man. I, I can get on that bandwagon. I'll tell we you. We didn't have – if it were only that play we were talking about, if that were the only play that mattered in the game, but dear God, I mean, the the, the, the little list of plays that we botched were. No, you're right. You're right. But the first half, we look lethargic on offense, like lethargic. So I'm just saying after a big play like that, look, pump some energy into your team and say, you know what? I'm going to trust you guys. I know you got stopped these last three plays, but you had that huge play here. Let's make something happen. Come on, Josh, make something. That's when you say, hey, Josh, you're an MVP type player, right? You're our you're our guy, right? You're our quarter or, yeah, quarter billion guy, right? Mm-hmm. Billion dollar guy. Josh, make this happen. And that's where I try to go into the half, get another touchdown, go up. and. But I understand. Trust me. I, get, I, I know football, so I know why you punt it. But in that moment, to me, outside of normal football thinking and normal football, you know, analytics, I just felt like in the moment the momentum was needed. Man, they needed something. I mean, if I had to buy like a few, maybe five or six cases of Monster Energy or Red Bull gives you wings, <laughs> you know, come on, something. Yeah. My yeah. God, it was it was just it was uninspiring. It was uninspired play. Um, I mean, I'm I'm usually I'm usually of the opinion, you know, at this point where I want to go back and look, or now go back, but I want to look forward. I don't even know who we play next. I mean, I'm just, I'm so distraught by the injuries, by the uninspired play, by, you know, and again, the referees didn't beat us. I'm never going to say that, uh, but it was, it was awful. It was everything all at once, everywhere, just like that damn movie with the hot dog fingers. I mean, it's like, I, I just felt like we were pouring gasoline on every fire, you know, either, either because we showed up late, because we didn't show up at all, because the referees showed up. Yeah, you know, I love that that uh, that meme going around. <laughs> there are more flags on the field than the uh, <laughs> than the than the union or whatever the hell it is. No, but you know, well, it's it's incredible. Yesterday, I think, and obviously, obviously, it wasn't the most um, penalized game, but I saw more laundry on that uh, on the field yesterday than I do on laundry day for me, man. And sometimes I go two, three weeks before doing laundry. You know what I mean? Like it was a mm-hmm. lot. Like what's happened? Like at some point, it's like okay, bro, bro. Can't... Just tell me you're doing your chonies, or at least you got like forty pairs, right? Tell me you're not re- oh, rewired chonies on I, right I, now. I free ball it, John. I'm free balling everywhere. Oh, oh <laughs> TMI. <laughs> hey, you asked, man. <laughs> oh man, this is a family show, bro. Uh, I, uh, I I wanted to believe. I wanted to believe that the egg that we laid in New York. Sorry, that we laid in New Jersey week New Jersey. one was going to be enough to carry the team. And, you know, we talk about the attitude 
after that game in Bill's Twitter, and it was fire everybody, rehire, every, you know, a few back. And then we go on a, a three-game win streak, and then it's, you know, everybody's the greatest thing ever. And I, I'm always kind of like in the middle, like, hey, man, it's never as good as you think. It's never as bad as you think. you got to hold tight on this a little bit. You know, don't mm-hmm. get too far over your skis. I, I, I want to believe that, you know, these types of performances are an anomaly and you don't see them again. But two in the first five games of the season, that's a real problem for me. I mean, I understand, you know, you're in a shootout and the guy that the team that has the ball last at the end of the game, a couple mistakes here and there, they end up beating you. You know, I can handle that uh, emotionally, you know, but this one was very depleting. So who do we play next week? We play the Giants. So we have a team that is you coming up that, that we're supposed to beat. Uh, we're currently on we're supposed to beat this London. team in London. It was supposed to be Bill's Mafia running all over Piccadilly Circus, you know, having the but, greatest time. My daughter was there. Sarah was there. Joe was there. The list of people. Okay. Did you see, by the way, Kate inserting herself into yo, everybody's <laughs> pictures? And I love Kate. Again? I love Kate so much. Like she's so like she's hilarious, man. She's hilarious. As a matter of fact, shout out to Kate. Go go. I'm gonna post it real quick after this. Go to my Twitter and, and make sure you go support her Etsy page. Buy her like she got so much great stuff. She's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, man. Like it, it's it's just. <laughs> I'm with. All right, you. all right. Like, hey, we we got <laughs> we griped and bitched long enough here. We got 13 minutes left or so. We could go two hours, but people would stop listening or crash their car or drive into a bridge abutment. But listen, <laughs> we've got the Giants next week. Given the injuries that we've mm. sustained on defense, you know, given the, the potential injuries that we're going to sustain on offense with our tight ends, what do we got to do? What do we got to do this upcoming week to beat the Giants? Well, for me, I think we got to get back to running the ball. I think um, James Cook can't have – obviously, he can't have another day like he had. We have to we have to play good defense. I don't know if Saquon Barkley is going to play, and if he does, I don't know if he's going to be efficient. But we have to stop their run game because right now their passing attack is, is just is pointless. We should dominate Daniel Jones. We should absolutely <laughs> – like we should we should destroy that offensive line. It, it should be. It shouldn't be close. The Bills are favorite. Uh, I think the spread is fourteen and a half points. Is what, how it opened against the Jaguars. That spread was four and a half. So there's a clear difference in talent here. We should dominate from beginning to end. Um, I, I don't even. I, if if the Buffalo Bills lose this game, and then I'm gonna shut up. If the Buffalo Bills lose this game, John, I'm telling you right now. Nobody's going to want to listen to the code of conduct. They probably won't even want to watch the, the hump day hotline with Joe. Cause they're going to be so upset with me by completely. Like if we lose to the giants, John, really pa- pack it in, pack it up. <laughs> I totally agree. Listen, um, there, there's one point that I wanted to, to circle back to. Okay? okay. From, from the game before I talk about the giants. And I've been thinking about this a lot. And I saw a lot of this actually in the high school football game on Friday night. Trevor Lawrence escaped a hell of a lot of pressure. Guys that were mm-hmm. there that had him in the grasp. You can't do that. That is unacceptable. We had we probably, I think I counted five opportunities to put him down six to 12 yards behind the line of scrimmage. And we didn't pursue in the right angle. We didn't stay on the upfield shoulder. I don't think everybody knows what that means, but you know, you have got to make those plays. It was said, Oh, the defense did okay because they hold them to a few points, but they had 88 damn plays. They had the ball a full quarter more than we did. And we didn't drop him on five instances where we had to. So that made me think about, I don't see Daniel Jones being that much, you know, he's probably not as good a runner as Trevor Lawrence, who I don't even consider to be a very good runner. So when when these guys get free, when Puna Ford gets free, when we didn't even have a chance to talk about Von Miller, I mean, he played a little, but he didn't have a lot of impact. Maybe he did. Then maybe that's why Epinesa was free. But damn it all, if you're going to get back there, take the guy down. Make the play 10 yards deep, six Mm -hmm. yards deep. If you don't and he escapes and it's incomplete or he makes a three-yard gain, it's a mental mind insert the your favorite profanity right there, but it's just deflating. Get the guy on the ground. 
Trevor Lawrence is not Josh Allen. He is not Patrick Mahomes. He is not, you know, uh, Jalen Hurts. Get the guy on the ground. I'm with you. I'm pissed about I'm that. You. I'm super pissed about that. No, and I'm with you. And you know why I'm pissed about it too? Because it seems like, so last year, that was the issue when Vaughn went out. Uh, prior to us getting Vaughn, that was the issue for the entire year before. Two years, but we had Jerry Hughes and we still had issues. We were pu- we were the best. I think we were like a top two team in the league at getting pressures on the quarterback. Getting pressure. but we were a top or a bottom five team at sacks. That can't happen. So yeah, that you is, can't go from mathematically last week that getting, mathematically that's make totally sense. disconnected. Yeah, How does that make even make sense? sense? Like last week, you go from nine sacks in a game to whatever this embarrassment. And I'm not talking about the loss. It was 25 to 20. You lose some, you win some. But that's an embarrassing effort when you go from one week saying I'm you're a dominant defensive line to now, like you said. Trevor Lawrence is not that guy. He's not Josh Allen, man. He's not so, Mike Vick so, back in the day. Like, what are we doing? So it, so I think you're, you're saying what I've alluded to with Joe a little bit. If you go back to last season and you see some of the net sack numbers by Epinesa, you know, he might, I don't know if he had seven or eight and a half or nine last year. How many of those were impactful at impact moments in the game? I don't want, mm-hmm. you know, garbage sack at the end of the fourth quarter, at the end of the second yeah. quarter when it's, you know, third and 30 and you're on your own 10 and, you know they got a. They're trying to get a touchdown. Those, those yeah. don't mean a lot to me. And Epinesa did it in this game. And I think when he had his first impact play, I said, "Wow, that's nice timing. Do it again, kid. Do it again. He Repeat did. it." Yep. And he did. Yesterday he had that Ooh. day. He, he had he had broken passes. He had sacks. He had you know like I need to see that effort every week. And you know, but it, like you're what you're saying, I'm a hundred percent in agreement with you. It's it's laughable how we can pressure the quarterback, but we never bring him down. Like, I'm not talking about this season. Yesterday was the only time that I can complain the way I'm complaining. But last season when Vaughn went down and then seasons prior, all the Jerry Hughes years, like we we pressure, pressure, pressure. Pressure bust pipes. But I'm going to tell you what, we ain't put enough to bust no pipes. We need to bring these guys down. We need to bring them down. You got any final thoughts? I don't thoughts? know. I don't, I don't know if I don't know if this episode was cathartic and I can just kind of this was my release, or you've amped me up even more. You know, I leave this podcast on Monday nights to go coach the JV offensive line. I'm always late because you know, Spence, you're super important. I want to be here for you. Uh, <laughs> forget the kids, man. I can't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'll I'll be driving over there. You know, just trying to decompress a little bit, and you know, I never take my anger out on the kids. Never, never that's a visual that. joke for everybody who's we listening <laughs> to, to the down <laughs> but well no. and then before, so before we get out of here let me ask you this though because you, you so you said you don't know if you're you know like you normally vent and get all the stuff out so looking at this now though going forward now for the rest of the season how do you feel currently about this buffalo bills team well uh if we use the miami game offense and continue to work on our running game, we can take the pressure off the defense. And if we can still be dynamic with the front four, we have a chance. Right now, if we come out, our offense from here on out, for the next, what is it, 12 games? I mean, the offense has got to be responsible for winning 10 of the next games, 10 of the next 12. We we cannot rely on the defense. Not because I don't think they're good, but they're they're depleted in positions of, of deep importance. And that's a fact. So we have got to, we have got to have the ball 10 minutes more than the other team. We must have 20 more offensive plays than they have. And that that's it. And we have got to have we between the three running backs, we must have a hundred to 125 yards rushing per game. And we have a chance. Minus the offense picking up the load, which I haven't been confident that we we've been able to do even last year. Um, I put our chances at hopeful for a wild card and having a really hard time owning the uh, owning the East. You? Well, wow. so I, I still feel a little more confident than that. I think I think teams are going to start figuring out the Dolphins within the next like two or three weeks. You know, not figuring out to where they're going to start beating them you know i don't think they're gonna drop six in a row or anything like that but i think teams are gonna 
um, start to figure them out. I think they'll drop a couple games. I think the Bills will start to figure it out and put it together. And uh, I think it's going to kind of be similar to what it was last year where, you know, the cream rises to the top and then the rest of the teams kind of start to fade out. So I think the Bills are still there. I don't think it's a wild card. I think we still win the division, but I need I need yeah, Josh. Yeah. And, and, and I'll have to say, and, you know, this is going to make a lot of people angry and you and I both love him. Kair Elam has to play as good as Levi Wallace. I wish we still had Levi Wallace. I, I just said it the other night. I was talking to somebody. Where is that guy? Uh, you know, <clears throat> the reason I brought it up is uh, one of the Oregon coaches was at South Point, you know, scouting mm -hmm. some of the players. And he was at Alabama. And I said, were you at Alabama when Levi Wallace was there? And he looked at me and he's like, man, I love that kid. Man, oh, man, I would take a full team of guys like him. And I was like, you know what? I know a guy who I'll be talking to on Monday night who feels the same way that you yeah. feel and I feel about that kid. So, no, I hey, love Levi, Spence, man. We're getting at the end here, buddy. I don't have much else yeah. to say. What you got to add anything at the end? No. So, um, before we get out of here, I do want to shout out my guy, Joe Miller. Um, he's he's over the pond or across the pond right now. Um, and he was there for the game and then he has some other things going on and he's just enjoying his time out there. Good vacation. So I, I did want to shout out the, the normal co-host of this show with you. And then I want to thank you for, for the opportunity to kick it with you for an hour, man. It's always fun to talk to a, a, a legend. Always fun. Buddy, anytime. Anytime. Uh, I'll say to everybody in the chat, thank you for coming. Everybody who's listening and watching and not chatting up with the, the group, join the chat. Uh, good people over there, lots of opinions. Yeah. You can disagree, disagree kindly. Um, for all the Buffalo Bills fans that made it over to the UK to watch the game, safe travels home, including you, Joe Miller, uh, and to everybody who didn't go, you know, wish you the best. Wish you guys all a great week. Um, that's me, man. That's my kind of Pollyanna thing. You know, as bad as things get, I'm always trying to, you know, pump people up, you know, be optimistic. There's enough trouble in the world as we've seen just over the past couple of days you know um keep your loved ones close say something nice be nice uh check in on mm -hmm. people and and uh we always end the show spence with um joe usually does it but i'll do it first i'll say i'll say it spence go bills what do you say go bills all right everybody take care have a, take care <laughs>